Anglers will be out in full force this weekend as yet another trout season opens across Pennsylvania. Every year, the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission stocks our state streams and creeks with millions of trout, a majority of which are non-native species. Yeah, Fox 43's Alyssa Kratz dives into whether these stocking practices could be harming the state fish, the brook trout. The calm before the storm. Just days from the opening of yet another trout season in Pennsylvania. This has been hiding in plain sight for quite a long time. Standing outside this state fish hatchery, James Seleski of the Native Fish Coalition's Pennsylvania chapter explains. But what they don't know and what PA Fish and Boat hasn't shared with them is that brown and rainbow trout that are stocked are actually ranked as some of the world's most highly invasive species. In 2023, the Fish and Boat Commission will stock 3.2 million adult trout across our state's lakes and streams. Nearly 94% will be brown and rainbow trout, both non-native to Pennsylvania. This stocking does occur in other states, but other states do it much more responsibly. Seleski is worried about the impact on another fish that's known and loved here in the Keystone State. Well, we have a mountain of research showing that this is causing the decline and disappearance of our state fish, native brook trout. And, you know, we know this now, and the stocking continues as the brook trout declines. The Fish and Boat Commission refutes that non-native stocked brown and rainbow trout are invasive, saying in order to be considered as such, a species, quote, must cause significant economic harm, environmental harm, and or harm to human health. Still, Dr. Isaac Lagoski, assistant professor of biology at Millersville University, says concerns about stocked fish are valid as the introduction of non-native species can create potential competition for food and other resources. There's some evidence uh, throughout uh, eastern North America that brook trout do grow at a reduced rate when they're in, uh, interacting with these other species. Um, there's also some evidence that they uh, shift uh, into smaller headwater streams. And while Dr. Lagoski's colleague, Dr. Aaron Haynes, agrees, he acknowledges there are other threats to the brook trout, which require cold, clean water to survive. Warming water temperatures, habitat degradation, and declining water quality must be monitored too. Good water quality not only benefits our brook trout, it benefits our native species overall, and it benefits us, which is extremely important. Now, the Fish and Boat Commission says that recreational trout fishing just wouldn't be possible without them stocking certain streams. They say that 85% of all stocked waters in Pennsylvania contain very few or no wild trout. The state also avoids stocking wild brook trout streams, which contain moderate to high density populations of those native fish. There's a tightrope that they have to walk and they're trying, they're trying to do both to some extent. Dr. Haynes is referring to the Fish and Boat Commission's Daily Balancing Act, managing the public interests of anglers while simultaneously protecting wildlife. The key is can you be more effective at both or maybe can you be more effective at say managing the native trout, brook trout, to provide a sustainable angling opportunities for the people of Pennsylvania. The Fish and Boat Commission calls protecting the native brook trout along with other wild trout a priority and points to several parts of its fisheries management plan focusing on their preservation. Things like addressing climate change and implementing a stocking authorization to better manage where exactly trout are being stocked. But Seleski doesn't buy it. But when you peel back the kind of conservation, you know, thin veil of conservation window dressing, Really what we're talking about is a hatchery operation and a social program that's littering our state with invasive trout species. As for where we go from here, Dr. Haynes believes it all comes down to looking for effective strategies, which both create opportunities for anglers and keep the brook trout swimming for years to come. And so that balance is key. And we can do both, but we've got to do it intelligently and with good research. Alyssa Kratz, Fox 43 News.